How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang and welcome back. Today's game was filmed at Gamers Co-op in Montreal, and it's got me rocking the Duke of Dumpsters, Doretti. I keep a Duplicant, Ghost Quarter, Torpor Orb, Ancient Tomb, Mountain, Kurakesh Anaki Ancient, and a Burnished Heart. Roxy is playing Alesha, keeping a Godless Shrine, Azra Oddsmaker, in Tomb, Toxic Deluge, Lightning Greaves, Skull Clamp, and Badlands. Kevin is playing Xenagos, keeping three mountains, two forests, Sneak Attack, and Vizier of the Menagerie. Josh is playing Hirobi, keeping three swamps, Maze of Ith, Sign in Blood, Beseech the Queen, and Cauldron of Souls. Kevin wins the die roll and starts us off. Kevin plays a forest. Roxy plays her Badlands and casts Skull Clamp. I play an Ancient Tomb. Josh plays a Swamp. Kevin plays a Mountain and taps two for a Fire Diamond, passing. Roxy plays a Godless Shrine, taking two so she can cast Lightning Greaves, and passes. I play a Mountain and pay three, also losing two for the Ancient Tomb to cast a Burnished Heart. Josh plays a Swamp and casts Sign in Blood, losing two and drawing two. Kevin plays a Mountain, and then pays 4 mana for Vizier of the Menagerie. Roxy plays a Blood Crypts, taking 2 so that comes untapped as well, and then casts Alesha. Once her commander is resolved, she moves the Lightning Greaves over onto her. She then moves to combat and attacks Josh for 3. Josh takes the commander damage, and Roxy passes to me. I play a Ghost Quarter, and then cast a Thran Temporal Gateway, taking another 2 from the Ancient Tomb before passing turn. Josh plays another matching Swamp, and then pays 3 mana for a Dothy Embrace. Kevin untaps and plays a Forest. He taps 5 for his commander, Xenagos. Moving to combat, the Xenagos trigger pumps the Vizier by plus 3 plus 3, and he swings it at me for 6. I take the hit, and Kevin passes. Roxy plays a Command Tower, and casts a Main Phase in Tomb. She searches her library for Hiroki Dustringer, put it into the graveyard, and then moves to combat. Roxy attacks Josh with Alesha and gets an Alesha trigger for attacking. She pays 3 to return Hiroki to the battlefield, who is also tapped in attacking Josh. Josh declares no blocks, taking the 5. Roxy then equips Hiroki with a Skull Clamp and passes to me. On my upkeep, I choose to untap Ancient Tomb as my one land for turn due to Hiroki's ability. I then play a Mountain and pass. Josh's turn has him untapping a Swamp, playing a Swamp, and then tapping out for a Zulpur Cutthroat and passing to Kevin. Kevin untaps a Forest and plays a Forest for turn and then casts an Arbor Elf. Moving to combat, he puts the Xenagos trigger on the Vizier again and this time swings at Roxy for 6. Roxy untaps her command tower and moves to combat. She declares attacks and goes at Kevin with Alesha, who connects, and Roxy passes. I untap a mountain and play an Urza's tower, passing to Josh. Josh untaps a swamp, plays a swamp, and passes to Kevin. Kevin untaps a mountain and plays a mountain. He activates the Arbor Elf to untap a forest and then pays 4 mana for sneak attack. He's able to activate the Sneak Attack to put out Scourge of the Thrones onto the battlefield. With Sneak Attack and the Scourge being on the battlefield, Xenagos is now active, and Kevin puts the Xenagos Pump onto the Scourge and swings at Roxy with everything. Roxy blocks Xenagos with Hiroki, but still takes 13. Roxy does draw 2 from Hiroki dying, and Kevin then moves through his remaining phases, sacrificing the Scourge from the Sneak Attack trigger at the end of turn. Roxy untaps all of her lands and plays a Verdant Catacomb. She cracks it losing one to go and search her library for a basic swamp and puts it into play. She casts Azra Ozmaker 
and moves to combat, getting the Azra Ozmaker trigger. She chooses to discard Timna and targets Alesha with the Ozmaker ability. On attacks, Alesha triggers and paying the activation cost, returns Timna tapped and attacking Kevin for a total of 5, and draws 2 from the Oddsmaker trigger, and then moves to her end step. At the end of turn, I activate the Thran Temporal Gateway to put Kurakesh into play. I untap, cast a Mana Vault, and pass to Josh. Josh untaps as well, playing out Hirobi and passing to Kevin. Kevin untaps and plays another Mountain for turn. He pays 1 green for Elanor Elves, and then casts Rampant Growth. Moving to combat, Xenagos triggers, and since it's not a May ability, he targets his Arbor Elf. This triggers Hirobi, destroying the Elf. Roxy untaps and casts a Cursed Totem. With the Cursed Totem on the stack, I sacrifice Burnished Heart, and pay Kurakesh's ability to double the trigger, searching for a total of 4 Mountains and putting them into play tapped. Roxy then casts Cathartic Reunion, discarding Dauntless Bodyguard and Mother of Ruins, drawing 3. She plays out a Soul Ring, and follows up with a Retribution of the Meek, which will destroy all creatures with power 4 or greater. With the wipe on the stack, Josh gives the Shadow to the Odds Maker, destroying it with Hirobi, and gains 1 with his opponents losing 1 from the Cutthroat Trigger. Roxy then declares attacks and goes at me for 2 with Timna, and Josh with Alesha for 3. I take the 2, with Roxy gaining 2, and Josh blocks Alesha with a Cutthroat, having his opponents lose another 1 and gaining 1. I lose 1 on my upkeep as I choose not to pay for the Mana Vault untap trigger, and I play an Inventor's Fair, and then cast my own Cathartic Reunion, discarding Topra Orb and Megacent Lattice. I then pay 4 for Doretti, tapping the Ancient Tomb and taking another 2, and then use the Duke of Dumpster's Minus ability to put Tober Orb into play after sacrificing the Mana Vault. Josh untaps and casts Reanimate, targeting his commander in the graveyard. He then casts a Cauldron of Souls, passing to Kevin. Kevin untaps and casts Insurrection, which has him gaining control of all creatures, all of whom have haste until the end of turn. Moving to combat, Josh responds by tapping the Cauldron and giving all creatures but Alessa persist, which triggers Hirobi and has them all destroyed. Kevin then attacks Josh for 3 with Alesha and passes to Roxy after giving her back her commander. Roxy plays a Clifftop Retreat and casts a Demonic Tutor. She puts a card to hand and shuffles, and then casts a Sire of Insanity. Moving to combat, she attacks Josh for 3 with Alesha again, and as Roxy moves to her end step, I activate my gateway, putting into play Wormcoil Engine. We then move to the beginning of the end step, and everyone has to discard their hand. I gain one life from the Inventor's Fair on my upkeep, and draw for turn. I crack the fair to search for an artifact from my library to put to hand, and I reveal an Alhamrat's archive. I then use the Thran's gateway to put it from my hand to the battlefield. I then uptick to ready, discarding one, but because of Alhamrat's archive, I get to draw two instead of one. I then play a mountain for turn, and pass, discarding my hand at the end of turn. Josh untaps, recasts Hirobi, and discards his hand at the end of turn. Kevin untaps, plays a land, and passes. Roxy equips her commander with the Skull Clamp, and moves the Lightning Greaves to the Sire of Insanity. She then casts a Grand Abolisher, and attacks Kevin with Alesha, and activates her ability, returning Hiroki to play tapped and attacking. This has Kevin taking 5, and Roxy passes. I untap 1 land, and use Doretti's minus ability to swap the Thran's Temporal Gateway for a Mana Vault. I then move to combat and swing the Wormcoil Engine at Roxy, who blocks with the Grand Abolisher. I gain 12 from the Lifelink and Alhamrit's Archive. In my second main phase, I cast Scrap Mastery, swapping all artifacts from play for those in the graveyard. Responding to this, Josh taps his cauldron to take out Alesha and Timna, because Hirobi is still out. With Duplicant coming into play, it targets the Sire of Insanity, and due to Hirobi, it's destroyed instead of exiled. Josh untaps and draws. He sacrifices a Mind Stone to draw a card, and moves to his main phase. He targets my Karn to give him Shadow until the end of turn, 
and destroys it with Hirobi. Since the Lattice and Karn are out, I use the chance to destroy two of Josh's untapped lands. He floats the mana, and Karn is then destroyed. Josh then targets my Burnished Heart with the floating mana, which I activate in response to go and get two more mountains. Josh then passes to Kevin. Kevin draws, plays a mountain, and passes. Roxy draws, recasts her commander, and then plays out a key to the city. I untap, and uptick to ready. I then pass, and at the end of turn, Josh gives duplicate shadow, destroying it with Hirobi. Josh untaps, and evaluates his targets. He attacks me for 4 with Hirobi, and then casts a Crypt Cast in his second main phase, passing to Kevin. Kevin draws and plays a Hunt Master of the Fells, gaining 2 life and a 2 2 green wolf token as the human enters. Roxy untaps and draws, moving to combat. She swings her commander at me for 3 and pays Alicia's activation on attack. This lets her return Tim the Weaver which deals a total of 5 to me, has Roxy gaining 2, and in her post-combat main phase, she loses 1 life to draw a card to Timna's ability. At the end of turn, I use the Thran Temporal Gateway to put out a copy of Mirrorworks. Josh also uses the Dothian Braith to take out the Huntsmaster before it can flip. I draw, and then down tick to ready, swapping the Lattice for Duplicant, and using the Mirrorworks to make a token copy of it as it enters. Duplicant targets Hirobi and Cryptgast, destroying them with Hirobi's trigger. Josh targets the original Duplicant by giving it Shadow to destroy it. I then follow up with a Mirror Battle Sphere and create a token copy of it as well with the Mirror Works, which has me making 8 Mirror Tokens and passing turn. Josh untaps and draws. He plays a Vesuva, which comes into play tapped as a copy of the Ancient Tomb and passes to Kevin. Kevin draws, and plays out Farseek in his main phase. This has him finding a mounting to put to play tapped, and he passes. Roxy casts Tishar, and follows up with a Phyrexian Revoker, naming Thran Temporal Gateway as it comes in. The Historic spell triggers Tishar, returning the Azur Oddsmaker to the battlefield. She then moves to combat, discarding a card to the Oddsmaker, and targeting Alicia. Alicia goes at Josh, and Timna goes at Kevin. Roxy then gains 2, and draws 4. 2 from the Odds Maker, and then 2 from Timna, as she pays 2 life in her post-combat main phase. She then plays an Isolated Chapel as her land for turn, and casts Umazawa's Jite. I untap and draw. Moving to combat, I swing both Battle Spheres at Roxy, tapping 4 mirrors each and giving both plus 4 plus 0, and dealing 8 damage to Roxy. Roxy then jumps both Battle Spheres to the Phyrexian Revoker and to Shar. In my second main phase, I play a Kuldratha Forge Master and make a copy of it using Mirrorworks, passing to Josh. Josh draws and casts a Solemn Simulacrum. He goes to find a Swamp, passing. Kevin draws and plays a Rogue's Passage. Roxy draws and casts Recruiter of the Guard. She searches for an answer, but instead only is able to find a Ravenous Chupacabra. She then casts the Tutored card and destroys one of the two Forge Masters. Moving to combat, once more she discards a card to the Odds Maker, targeting Alicia with a trigger. Alicia goes at Josh, and Timna goes at Kevin, gaining two, and drawing two from the Odds Maker. She chooses not to lose life to Timna's ability in her post combat main phase, and passes to me. I untap and draw, upticking to ready to discard a card and draw a card. I activate the remaining Forge Master, sacrificing some artifacts, to go and find its sculpting steel making a third copy of the Mirror Battle Sphere, and with it entering, make another copy of it with Mirror Works. Moving to combat, one Battle Sphere goes at Josh, while one goes at Roxy. For each Battle Sphere trigger, I tap 8 Mirrors, dealing 8 damage, and pumping that respective Battle Sphere by plus 8 plus 0. Kevin makes the Battle Sphere that is attacking Josh unblockable, and Josh gives the one attacking Roxy shadow so that he's not the only one getting taken out. This just leaves Kevin alone with no hand, and he scoops it up to me. Game review time. I'm pretty sure that Mutually Assured Destruction isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I gotta say I laughed pretty hard when Josh used the Dothri Embrace to take out Roxy at the same time as he was going out. Hirobi is an interesting commander, and I love the interaction between Xenagos and Hirobi, forcing Kevin to sacrifice his own creature. As for Kevin's deck, it seemed like he kept a land-heavy hand, and as a result, seemed to only draw lands moving forward. 
It also didn't help that he had the highest life total, so when that scourge hit the field, he really couldn't get any extra combat steps and really do any damage. This was actually an earlier version of my Doretti deck. It's changed a lot since this was filmed in 2018, but it's still fun to see older cards like Kurakesh doing work. Speaking of decks that have been around since 2018, Roxy's Alesha deck is still around and kicking, not to mention much stronger and faster. There have been some great new additions to the Mardu Commander, and it's always fun to play against her. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.